Hello, Rock Children. Welcome to the Rock Children service. Let's keep the rock rocking. I rock the rock, it's got a rock, so rock, and if you're rocking with the rock, then you're rocking with us. I rock the rock, it's got a rock, so rock, and if you're rocking with the rock, then you're rocking with us. Hey. giving back to God with my tithes and offerings. So does Erica. She writes to us to say, I love giving every week at church, but sometimes I wonder, what does God's money get used for? Oh man, Erica, there's all sorts of ways our tithes and offerings get used. It goes directly to help God's plan. God uses your offering to help with all the things He's doing in the world. Sometimes what we give goes to help build churches in our neighborhood and around the world. That means more places where kids and adults can hear about Jesus. Sometimes what we give goes to helping people during times in their life when they really need God to provide for them. That means giving people help in our city and across the globe during big and small disasters. Sometimes what we give is used to share the Bible with people who have never had the chance to read it. With apps and technology, we're able to reach others like never before. The money we give as offering becomes a part of all that. Pretty exciting, isn't it? Thanks for your question, Erica, and thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to reach, reach others and put, put God first. Hi, I'm a rock mom, and I support the Rock Children's Church with my funds because of the involvement, engagement, and all of the exciting activities they have for our children. Guess what time it is? Do you know? It's time to connect to God together by singing and moving to music. Even though sometimes I may not feel like dancing or singing, it's not about how I feel. God deserves all of our worship all the time. He deserves our best. He deserves all of our thanks. So get up and let's connect to God together.
is a brand new month, and this month we're going to be celebrating and focusing on something very, very special. We're going to celebrate and we're going to talk about worship. We're going to talk about praise and worship. So while we get ready for this particular service, I want you to write in the chat right now. I'm going to give you a few minutes to write in the chat. Tell me some the ways that you can worship God. Tell me what are some of the ways that you think you can worship God. I see those chats coming in. Great, great, great. Well, there are so many ways that we can worship God. And what we're going to do, we're going to partner with our friends from Connect Academy, and they're going to help us understand why we should worship God. We're going to dance. We're going to sing. We're going to get real loud. Let our voices ring. We're going to party. We're having fun with Jesus Christ. He's God's only son. Now everybody, from the front to the back, put your hands in the air and clap, clap, clap. Seeing old friends, making new friends, here with Jesus, we're connected. Like that. that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's going on in here? Oh, we're just teaching Jaden the official worship signals. Well, what's that? I'm, I'm not following. You know, the things people do when they're singing worship music in church. For example, this, the hold my TV. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I do that one. Yeah. Uh, I, I did this on Sunday. This is the touchdown. I. <laughs> oh, uh, what about this one? Oh, I know this one. It's uh, the hold my burrito. Oh, I've only ever heard it called the hold my baby. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That's a rather large burrito. <laughs> we are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name's Jaden, and this is the time we learned why and how we worship. Oh, hi. Welcome to Connect HQ. I'm Mike. Hi, Mike. My name's Bree. I heard this was the place to come if I have questions about God. You heard right. My name's Jaden. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> so, how can we help you? Well, I'm interested in learning more about worship, why we worship God, and different ways we can worship God. Oh, well, I'm going to worship night at my church tonight. You're welcome to come with me. Actually, I was hoping I could study worshipers in their natural habitat, if that's possible. Oh, uh, what? I'm a researcher. I like to learn from people by watching what they do naturally. Do you think you could help me do that? Well, um, Mike, if you want to show Bree around HQ, I can start working on tracking down some links. Sure thing. Bree, I will be your tour guide. Wonderful. I have an outfit brought up for you. Do what now? Hey, uh, Brie, khaki's not really my color, by the way. Nobody wears khaki because they like the color, Mike. Now, who's that? It's Rodney. He looks like a good first subject. Okay, so what do we do now? We wait for the worshiping to start. <sighs> oh my goodness, I didn't realize how late it was. Only a couple hours until I have to leave for church. God... Please help me find the right links for Brie. I don't want to miss out on worshiping you tonight. Thanks. Amen. Okay. Reverse. Let's see what I can find. Brie! How long are we going to sit here? How long does it take a person to start worshiping? It's not something you can plan on. Hey, I have an idea. Here, you stay here. I'm gonna go talk to him like I normally would. I promise, it will not interfere with your study. Thinking on your feet. I like it. Do it. Ah! Ah! Where did you come from?
a mic? <laughs> and what are you wearing? Uh, I am trying out a new uniform. Okay. I don't think khaki's your color. I know, right? Oh, so what are you doing? I'm just looking over footage from the outside that I took earlier this week. Oh, look at that mountain, it's beautiful. Good job, Rodney. <laughs> well, it's not me. It's God. God made that mountain. And God made every tree and every bird. God made everything that we see and everything that we don't see, no matter how big or small. That's, that's amazing. For sure, God is awesome. God is awesome. And I need to do something to show him how awesome I think he is. God deserves my worship. God deserves my worship. That's a great point, Rodney. I know what I have to do. Hmm? Impromptu worship dance party time! Impromptu worship dance party time! <laughs> talking about how amazing it was that God created the mountains and the trees and the birds. That's one reason why we worship God, because he created everything in the universe. He created you, he created me, he created our friends and family, and because of that, he is worthy of our worship. Ooh, which, which ties in perfectly with the verse link I just found. Do you want me to teach it to you? Of course. Okay, so it's from the book of Revelation, chapter four, verse 11. Revelation 4, 11. Revelation 4, 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God. You are worthy, our Lord and God. To receive glory and honor and power. To receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. For you created all things. When we realize how much God deserves our worship, we can't help but worship him. That's why Rodney started playing worship music and dancing. Those are two ways to worship God. And that's why I'm so excited to go to worship night at my church. <sighs> Fascinating. This is fascinating. Thank you both for your help. Oh, um, I'm gonna go get started on those Bible links. I don't wanna miss out on worshiping tonight. Great, so you ready to get back out there, Bree? Let's see what new subjects we can find. Hey, Bree, do you wanna, I don't know, go to a different room? I was thinking we could like climb into the vents and Watch the quiet time group pray. I don't mind staying here. I once hid in the tree in the African savanna for three days trying to catch a glimpse of a wild king cheetah. You and I have lived very different lives. I think somebody's coming. I am checking the squeakiness of chairs. <laughs> yep, still squeaky. So, what are you working on? Well, I'm working on some new ideas for a skit vision video. Ooh, what about? Rodney suggested that we make a video about worshiping God and all the different ways that you can do that. I just love it. So I volunteered to make a list of all the different ways. Ooh, so what do you have on the list so far? A lot of things. Singing and dancing, of course, but also things like raising your hands up to God while you worship, listening to him quietly, serving others, giving to those in need, and writing about him like I am right now. It is so awesome that God gave us so many ways to worship him. I know, and I love that I can help other people figure out ways to worship God too. Wow, well, good luck on that video. I've got more chairs to test for squeakiness. Ooh, bye. No idea there were so many different ways to worship God. It's amazing. I know, it's not just music and dancing, it's so much more than that. Well, that leads me to another question. Out of all the ways to worship God that your friend listed, does everyone worship in all of those ways? Definitely not. God made each of us, and that includes making each of us to worship him in a different way. So, how do I figure out how I'm supposed to worship God? Well, ask God. 
If you ask him for help, he'll show you the right ways to live your whole life in worship to him. I wonder what way God made me to worship him. I can't wait to find out. <sighs> Looks like Jaden found a Bible link. <gasps> Onward. I was having the hardest time finding a Bible link for you, Bree. But I took a moment and I asked God to help me and he guided me to the perfect video. I can't wait to see it. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. It's alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. See the wonderful stories inside. Every day I'm searching me through history and poetry. How much Jesus loves me. God's great story lives. There's no other book like this. This book is alive. It was Passover time. Jerusalem was filled with people. When Jesus reached the Mount of Olives, a hill overlooking Jerusalem, he told two of his disciples to find a donkey. They found the donkey and put their cloaks on it. Jesus rode on the donkey, fulfilling the Bible verse that says, Here comes your king, Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. Jesus rode the donkey down to Jerusalem. Many people remembered his miracles and joined him. They put cloaks and palm branches on the road before him to honor him. They hoped that Jesus was God's promised savior. So they shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. The whole world is following him, the Pharisees grumbled. Tell them to be quiet, Jesus. Even if everyone stopped shouting, Jesus replied, the stones would still praise me. Jesus is our God and King. The people of Jerusalem worshipped him because they knew he deserved all the glory and honor they could give him. And if the people didn't worship Jesus, the rocks would. Because everything God's created knows how awesome and worthy he is, rocks included. How would a rock worship? You know, I don't know. I always assumed it was something like, <gasps> like that. Interesting. Interesting. I can't thank you both enough for helping me answer my question. I feel like now I have a better understanding of why and how we worship God. I'm not going to forget that God deserves my worship. You know, it was awesome watching other people worship in their natural habitat. And I'll admit, the clothes kind of grow on me after a while. Oh, my goodness. I need to go. I don't want to be late for worship night. Oh, have a good time, Jaden. I learned a lot from watching you worship, too. Me? Well, just a few minutes ago when you said you were having a hard time finding the right Bible link, but then you took a moment and asked God for help, and he led you to the perfect video. You both served me and brought glory to him, and according to my notes, those are both two great ways to worship God. Huh. I guess I was worshiping God without even realizing it. You know what? That is so awesome that we can worship God anywhere, not just in a church. Thanks for pointing that out, Bree. Happy to be of service. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm a part of Connect HQ. I have this great verse I want to share with you. Say it with me like this. Revelation 4.11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. God created everything that is good in this world, and that is amazing. And because of that, He is worthy. He deserves all the glory and honor that we can give Him with our whole lives. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people there couldn't help but worship Him. They understood the truth that Jesus is our God and King. And it's not just people. All of creation knows how worthy Jesus is, even the rocks. It's easy sometimes to think that worship is only about singing worship songs and dancing, but there's so much more to it than that. We can worship God by serving others, writing about God, giving to those in need, and in so many other ways. And if you're not sure what the right way to worship God is for you, just ask Him. 
God made us all to worship in different ways, and He will lead you to the right answer. Don't forget, God deserves my worship. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Bree, are you taking notes on me? I couldn't pass up the chance to witness the making of a real Connect transmission. You don't mind, do you? Nah, it's not the first time I was studied by the scientific community. The worship night was amazing. Although there was a really tall person standing in front of me the whole time, I could only see the left half or the right half of the stage at one time. But it was all right. I can worship God with my eyes closed. Do you want to be friends with the good and perfect God who created everything and deserves all of our worship? If so, you can make that choice today by following Jesus. All you have to remember are the ABCs. A. Admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. Did you make that choice today? If so, be sure to talk about it with the parent or leader you trust. Welcome back, Rock Friends. Did you enjoy that message? Did you enjoy how our friends from Connect were able to show us how we can worship God with what we have? Did you know, what was the big point? The point was, we can worship God because He deserves it. You know what, Rock Friends, there's a scripture that I want you to try to memorize. And many of you may maybe already know it, but it's Psalms 100. Can you say that with me? Psalms 100. And I'm going to read it for you. Psalms 100 says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. We worship God because he deserves it. Now, in this particular scripture, the Bible uses terms like enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. In the chat, tell me if you can think of what you think that means when we enter into God's courts or enter into his gates. What do you think? Well, you know, even though we're going to, we're, we're having service virtually right now, but when we would come to the Rock Church or we would come to the Fountain of Praise, that is us going into the courtroom. That's us going into the courtroom to worship God. So even right where you are, watching it on, on your smartphone, watching it on your tablet, watching it on your smart TV, you now have made your house, made the space that you're viewing a temple. So you're worshiping God. And so that's why right now, just with me, you can worship God right where you are because he deserves it. And even though you might be you know, a, a, a younger child, that doesn't mean that you can't worship God. Just like we saw in the video, there are so many ways that we can worship God. Many of you have great gifts of singing. That's a way you can worship God. Many of you have gift of dance. That's a way you can worship God. Many of you play instruments beautifully. That's a way you can worship God. But if you remember in the video, you know, Jaden actually was showing her worship by praying for someone. So worship is, is making it known that you're going to serve God with whatever gift or whatever talent that you have, whether it be singing, dancing, whether it's uh, praying for someone, whether it's helping someone, that's an act of worship. And so, so Rock, friends, you're never too young to worship God. Well, you know, this is first Sunday. So this particular Sunday, we take our time where we have Holy Communion. And so as we get ready for the Holy Communion, we have a special presentation from one of your rock friends that's going to share a musical selection 
and then we'll come back with our communion. That's a great question, Rock Friend. The reason why we have communion is that the Bible reminds us that we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ. In fact, before Jesus went to the cross, he had the Last Supper with his disciples when he was here on the earth. But then after that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible tells us that we are to remember the suffering and the penalty that Jesus Christ paid for our sins. And the way that we remember that is that we remember the pain and the suffering that he went through. Because we sinned and we made mistakes and God wanted to have a relationship with us, but someone had to pay the price for our sin. And that person was Jesus Christ. And he was nailed to a cross, which is called crucifixion. That's how he died for my sins and your sins. And they took nails like this. And they hammered those nails in his hand. And they hammered those nails in his feet. So it was a very painful, brutal death. And because he was not just fully God, but he was also fully man, he had flesh and blood, just like you and I. And so when they put those nails in his hand, the Bible says that that represents his body. So, he, so we have element of bread that represents the body of Jesus Christ that was broken on the cross. And then also because he was fully man, when they put nails in his hand and feet, blood came out of him and he was in pain. So the cup that's filled with juice in this case represents the blood that Jesus Christ shed for us. And so that's why we do communion. That's, how, that's why we have communion, is to remember the punishment and the penalty and the death of Jesus Christ. So today, we have an opportunity to have our communion service, where we get to partake in the Holy Communion. And we're so grateful and honored to be able to do this with you. While we haven't been able to do it physically with you, but we can do it virtually together. Uh, parents, rock friends, or others, adults, and family members that may be watching, uh, the communion, first and foremost, are for those that have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And also for those that have followed him in baptism. So if you haven't received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior yet, or followed him in baptism, we're going to ask that you not take this communion with us at this time, but we know that there are several rock children and parents and those that are watching that have received Jesus Christ and are baptized believers, and so we're excited to be able to take this communion together. So before we partake in these holy this Holy Communion, we will have prayer by Minister Vanessa, and then we'll take the sacraments. Let's go to God. Our Heavenly Father, were it not for Jesus, who shed his blood and had his flesh broken on our behalf, we could never come before you as your children. In him we have this sonship, 
In him we have forgiveness and adoption. In him we have boldness to call you Father. For your great love expressed in this Holy Communion, we give thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if you have your communion sacraments, I ask that you stand and we'll receive the communion together. The Bible says that on that same night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. And he said, this is my body, broken for the sin of the world. You take this and eat Repeat after me. His body was broken. His body, His body was broken. Just for me. Just for me. And in the same way, when he had given thanks, he took the cup and he said, This represents my blood shed for the remission or forgiveness of sin. You take this and drink. His blood was shed. His blood was shed. Just for me. Just for me. And the Bible says that we represent his resurrection. That if any man, woman, boy or girl, if they be in Christ, all things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we leave this place knowing that we are new in Christ. Knowing that because of the penalty and the punishment that Jesus paid, that we are forgiven and that we will live with him forever. And so we can hold our heads up high, knowing that our life matters to God and that we will always be with him. And so we just are so thankful and grateful that we had this wonderful opportunity to share together Holy Communion. Well, you know, one of our favorite activities is to bless you. So as you're standing, we want you to place your finger on your forehead and receive your blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance towards you and give you peace. See you soon.